Hey, joining us now, uh, Steve Bannon, former White House strategist uh, for President uh, Donald Trump, the man who helped the president get into the White House to begin with. Steve, you wrote about this Chinese deal today. So thanks so much for joining us. What's your greatest concern going forward? Well, the greatest concern is that we take our eye off the ball. Look, this is not about tra- this is not a simple trade deal. This is really about economic war. The, Ch- the Chinese Communist Party has been running on the United States of America for 20, 25 years. Donald Trump's been on this even as a private citizen. It's the central mm-hmm. reason he's president of the United States. The managed decline of our elites, represented by Hillary Clinton, particularly in the upper Midwest, led to Trump's victory. And the problem we've got here is that that the Chinese system is so radically different than ours. They've been ripping us off, forced technology transfers, intellectual property theft, subsidies of state-owned industries. It's, it, this thing is, you know, it's, 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 out, it's out of control. It's out of control from the, uh, from the, Chinese, uh, from the Chinese point of view, and it's got to be stopped. It has to be stopped. Trump, is, that's why this uh, trade negotiation is so tough. And what the Chinese, what they've done to every administration, to Clinton, to Bush and Obama, is to get a deal and then to renege on it. And they try to retrade Trump last week, and Trump said, no way. I'm going to I'm gonna up these tariffs. And I believe he's actually going to go 25 percent across the board on all $500 billion of trade we do with China. So I think, you have, I think there's much more to come on this. Uh, and the thing is, Wall Street didn't like it in the beginning of the day. It doesn't like it today, but they rally at the end of the day. And with these numbers, Steve, what does it do for the president's hand when he sees the strong economic numbers in almost every aspect of this economy? Well, see, Brian, here's the thing Wall Street doesn't want to talk about. The miss that Wall Street had on the economic growth number of 10 days ago, that 3.2 percent versus the 2.2, that 1 percent or 33 percent uptick, was totally tied to bringing down the trade deficit with China. Import prices are falling. All this nonsense you're hearing about these tariffs simply just spin from Wall Street. Okay, and that's why the market has been relatively strong. The economy, because Trump is bringing manufacturing jobs and the supply chain back to the industrial democracies, Japan, North America, and Western Europe. That's why this economy is on fire right now. Trump's economic policy has been absolutely correct. The cheerleaders on Wall Street that really are the finance department for the Chinese Communist Party have been telling Trump that this is going to be an economic disaster. They're wrong. They're just dead wrong. Trump is right on this, and I think he understands now. He's got the economy to his back, and he's sitting there saying, hey, these guys are trying to retrade us on the structural changes that need to be made. They're trying to renege on it. And Trump, I think, is saying it's not going to happen on my watch. You have a military background as well as a Wall Street background, uh, as well as being a political strategist. So let's talk about to the layman listening right now. People are saying, wait a second, Wall Street? Wall Street and China on the same side? What do you mean by that? Wall Street's been financing the Chinese economy. I mean, Wall Street has financed, by the way, not just Wall Street, but they've used the, they've used the working class and the deplorables pension money. It's the pension funds that give it to the money managers, give it to the hedge funds, give it to the investment banks to be managed. It is pension fund money. It's the working class of the United States, the firemen, the teachers. It's that money that is financed. All the factories going to, to China, all this industrial buildup of corporate America, where all the factories got shipped to China and the opioids came to the heartland of this country, that is all financed by Wall Street. Wall Street and the city of London financed the Chinese Communist Party, financed China. All the jobs went over. So that's why that's why people are sitting there going, that's why Wall Street's a big – they're cheerleader for this. They've been saying, oh, you've got to do a deal. You've got to have $2 trillion of soybeans. Forget the structural changes. They have been relentless in telling Trump, you don't have to go too deep into this. Just let's get a trade deal. Let's have them buy more soybeans, more pork bellies, and everything will be fine. If you don't, the stock market's going to collapse. And yeah. Trump is saying, no, I'm bringing manufacturing jobs back. I promise that to the American people, and I'm going to do it. And, and you know that, and that's what's going to happen. Uh, a couple of things. You write about this, and you break it down to uh, uh, d- different numbers of understandings, one of which you say, anything less than a great deal will subject the president to relentless criticism from uh, from Schumer and Sanders and even Republicans like Cruz and Rubio. I am heartened, uh, and I know you're much more cynical than I am, but I'm heartened that Schumer has been nothing but supportive in being tough against China so far because China takes that as a signal of strength for the president. Yeah, well, for, on one level, look, Schumer is an old-school Democrat. Remember, the labor union guys, the Robert Kuttners, they, they, they support us. They've been hawks on China. 
Okay. However, the Schumer, the Schumer uh, a tweet the other day. I am cynical. It does show support. He said, "Hang tough. We got your back. You got to stand tall in China." But he's going to be the first to criticize President Trump. If Trump, President Trump tries to compromise at all, he'll be the first one in there. Bernie Sanders got to the right of Trump the other day, where he accused Trump of not uh, designating China a currency manipulator on day one. We did kind of commit to that. And it was Stephen Mnuchin and the Treasury guys and the Wall Street guys that talked the president out of it. The president said, okay, I want to do this, but since we have this trade negotiation, I'll hold off on it. Bernie Sanders stood down the other day. The Democrats understand they have, they're going to try to get to the right of Trump. And one of the reasons is Joe Biden. Biden is pathetic on this. Biden, I think, is quasi-compromised on this. His son, he took his son over in 2013 on an official trip on Air Force Two. The son hung around. The leaders of the CCP stayed and closed the deal, as Peter Schweitzer showed in his book Secret Empires, took $1.5 billion dollars in cash from the Bank of China to fund his private equity fund. Then his private equity fund started buying and and investing in Chinese surveillance companies that had this horrific surveillance on the Uyghurs, the Christians, the Catholics, and the citizens of China. So Biden is up to his neck. He said the other day, China's not a competitor. Why do you say China's a competitor? Right? And so I think you're seeing certain guys in the Democratic Party getting to the right of Biden and trying to get to the right of Trump. I've never actually heard a, a modern politician make a statement like that on China. And Biden said it, and, and yeah, Biden says it, and even his own party started condemning him. But it's, so, it's a guy that's so out of touch. He's also, Hunter Biden's also in trouble when it comes to the Ukraine as well. Ukraine, I think, look, the Hunter Biden's up to his neck in corruption. This is the permanent political class. His partner in this, too, is John, Ker- John Kerry's stepson, Teresa Hines' son. This is the permanent political class in action where foreign governments you know, finance their private equity funds. China, The China thing's going to stink to high heaven. When they're trying to suppress it, they don't want people talking about it. But Biden the other day, I, I honestly think, and I think the Democratic primary has got to take care of this. To me, it disqualifies him as a serious candidate. You cannot be running to try to be commander-in-chief, president of the United States, one of the greatest geostrategic threat we've ever faced is China. And you have you know, it's so many different people from, the par- from different parties working on this topic right now. For a guy to sit there and go, they're not a competitor, it's like, what reality? And here's the thing. Biden was there for eight years of Obama when they looked the other way. Remember, these islands are in the South China Sea which are stationary aircraft carriers that we just sent two destroyers by the other day, are a ticking time bomb. People actually think when Obama and Biden allowed those to be built and didn't do anything about it, the people in Asia will tell you that that is America's Munich of the 21st century, that that's going to come back to haunt us. I was, as a young naval officer, I was in the Pacific Fleet. We used to in the South China Sea all the time in the 70s and 80s, total free navigation by the Seventh Fleet. That You don't have that today, and one of the reasons what happened on Joe Biden's watch when he was there with Obama. We're talking with Steve Bannon now. Steve, uh, I get it. Uh, I think the president gets it. I think he's standing strong. He's staring down the market, and then Robert Lighthizer backed up the fact that they were reneging on most of their pledges. So we'll see where this goes. I want to move on and use your expertise in other areas. We have the, uh, the USS Abraham Lincoln steaming towards the Persian Gulf right now. It seems we have intelligence from the, uh, from the Israelis and others that uh, the Iranians are looking for to hit back at us for the sanctions and declaring the Republican Guard uh, a terrorist group. What, what do you think the Iranians will try to do? How desperate, if at all, are they? Well, look, uh, you know, I'm a huge believer in President Trump's America first foreign policy. I think this thing is winning. I think he's got his focus on the right elements. I'm also somebody that doesn't like, you know, to, this, being an interventionist. What happened in Latin America the other day and in Iran. As a young naval officer in 1979, I spent six months, you know, off of Iran in a carrier battle group on Gonzo and Camel Station. It's a big deal when the United States has a carrier battle group up there. That's a signal. And I think people have to be really think this thing through, right? I, the sanctions are working against Iran. I, designating the group as a terrorist group is something we started working on day one. The Muslim Brotherhood should be right in there. However, when you start sending, when you start sending a signal like this, you got to be prepared to do something. You got to back it up. And my fear right now, not just not just for the election of 2020, but also for the country, we're spread thin. 
we got to focus. You have to focus and you have to prioritize. The Chinese situation, and Korea is a subset of that in the South China Sea, to me is the most vital issue we're working on right now. You've got to understand in Venezuela and places like Iran, you can't spread yourself too thin. And you particularly can't spread yourself too thin of personnel. You know, it's pretty thinly staffed right now. I think both in the White House, State Department, the Department of Defense, and I'm just giving the perspective of a kid, you know, a guy that was 23, 24 years old that was on a, you know, in a, on a destroyer in a battle group off of Iran. When you send the United States Navy up there, you're sending a message. And part of the message is, hey, we're here. <laughs> if anything goes wrong, we're going to hit. And I don't know if the country is there yet. I don't know if it, need, if it needs to be geostrategically. So I would advise both in Venezuela and Iran to calm down, take a deep breath, and let's think this thing through, and let's particularly think it through for the long game. Steve, rapid fire real quick. Would you allow uh, Robert Mueller, uh, unless he quits as special counsel, he can do it himself, would you allow Robert Mueller to go back up on May 15th and, and speak to the Senate Judiciary Committee? Look, I think it's a, a nonsense. This thing's still going on. It's a total Russia hoax. But the president did more. He's 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 cooperated more. He sent look. He, he waived executive privilege. He sent us all up there. I don't think most have anything particularly special to say. I think it's all in the report. I wouldn't have a problem if somebody was ordered to go up there and testify <clears throat> to Mueller. Uh, I can see the president said enough's enough. I certainly think it's enough. Enough. This is a hoax that the Democrats just keep beating a dead horse. But I think it works against them politically. I think the American people are fed up with it. I think the American people realize that we live in a very dangerous world, that the president's got an economy that's on fire in very dangerous times. That's what they want to focus on. Jobs, their family, safety and security of the United States of America and its allies. And if the Democrats want to beat a dead horse. I kind of say do it because the president has gone out of his way. Look, I advise him he went too far out of his way, but he went out of his way to have full disclosure. I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I can understand why he and Barr want to shut it down. All right, uh, Steve, I know you're a real busy guy. I know you're going overseas. Uh, uh, I won't tell exactly where, but you're going to another country over in Europe. I hope this is not going to be the last time you join us. We need your insight. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you having me on. All right, Steve Bannon, thanks so much.